character represents everything worthy of respect. It's a big deal in my family. Like my family is very, uh, I guess, musical people. I just used to like record um, beats into my computer. Um, I didn't have any software or anything like that. I just had a sound recorder and I would just uh, record it and then layer it over top of each other. And I had to like kind of assume that the time was right, so I'd have to record it like over and over and over again to get it to lay over each other. Um, and that kind of like when I started making beats, I used to listen to, uh, to records all the time. I used to listen to like D'Angelo on like uh, Erica and uh, all these old records. My dad like loved the Brothers Johnson. What else do I like? Um, I like Minnie Ripperton a lot. I like her a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, you know, so that's, I'm kind of just incorporating that more into my records. My two biggest influences are probably Questlove and Dilla. Those artists are the artists that kind of were like the first musical encounters I had, like consciously. So for me, it's probably Dilla. Like the first album I bought was produced mostly by Dilla. Um, it was Q-Tip Amplified. That's, that's what kind of started my obsession with that kind of sound, that kind of like unorthodox timing. I was aware that I liked it and I wanted to assimilate it into myself because it makes it feel very human. I'm, a, I'm very much about writing very human sounding music. I'm one of the founding members of Say Why. And um, that's, that was the thing that brought us together is the, is the producer side of things. I didn't really start rapping until we started making records together. Singing was something that kind of came later too. I didn't, I mean, I really was just kind of like fooling around and then I started kind of learning what works with my voice. Um, but I still didn't have any training, so it was a lot of uh, limitations. And I'm really just now at a place where I'm getting training. I can, I can write um, for the most part just about anything, you know, because I like just about everything, you know? So I, I literally will, will score um, a piece, you know, or I may write a hip hop song, a soul song, a rock song, a funk song, whatever, legitimately, you know, because I enjoy it. You know? Right now I'm working on a project called The Existential because um, it is just that. Um, I definitely want to deal with a lot more activism and future projects, but I think that the reason why activism is so difficult right now is because people are still um, traumatized. They don't uh, know how to deal with their experiences and deal with themselves. and so. It's difficult to be effective um, when <clears throat> you don't know what is kind of killing you being a pur purposeful person, you know? That's, that's what's in the way of progression, is that we haven't dealt with our own trauma yet, and it's kind of just reverberating itself in how we interact. And so, for me right now, I want to be able to spread something that... Uh, that, that again encourages working on those things uh, for each person. Once we get past that, I think that we'll be able to do the work necessary to build what we need to. You know? Nothing is, is purposeless, even if we try to make it that. And um, that's what's important for me right now, is it's become increasingly important, making art that's purposeful. Um, so just as I'm working through things, as I'm working things out, and as I'm growing, I want to share those things with other people so they can be able to uh, to apply that to their process. You know, I mean, it's not going to be the same way for everybody, but there are certain things that are human that everybody experiences, and it's something that when we articulate it in our art, then we give other people the opportunity to work that out for themselves. And that's, for me, that's what it's about right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah.